Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you the fly pattern that I've caught more trout on than any other fly pattern. But first, let's get prepared. Okay guys, so don't get me wrong, I love dry fly fishing as much as everybody else. It's probably my favorite, even more than streamers. But this fly has caught me more fish than any other fly. And you guessed it, it's a nymph. Right here we have the Rainbow Warrior. I don't know if you can see that here in the camera. This fly I think was originally tied by Lance Egan, but uh, we kind of have an adaptation because I don't have the exact right hooks, but you don't need the exact right hooks. You just need what you have and that's gonna work. So we're gonna tie this pattern up today and I'll teach you how. So any size 16 through 20, I don't know, you could probably even go smaller, but I can't, uh, it's too hard to tie. So what we have here is a size 16 nymph, 2X heavy, 2X long, it's fine if it's curved, it's cool if it's not, doesn't really matter. And then you need the right size beads to give it a little weight, give it a little head. I'm gonna tie some up today here in gold and in this black nickel. If you have tungsten, that's even better probably, it will sink even faster, but use what you have, it's okay. Then you're gonna need some kind of rainbow uh, ribbon here, tinsel, if you will. This is really good stuff. The shinier or rainbowy it is, hence the name, the better. Um, and then a Spectrum Mohair, uh, this one Spectrum Mohair Plus. Um, any kind of rainbowy, flashy um, is gonna do well. So there's that. And uh, to finish it off, you can either use a little super glue or I've got this hard as whole head cement. This works good. And your vise and your tools. A little bit of red uh, floss, or what is this? Waxed, 70, 100 yards. So kind of whatever you have is gonna work just fine. So let's get tying. All right, put that one down. I don't know what, uh, Everybody else does, but I personally like to pinch the barbs when I'm tying the fly. It just saves me that time in the field from having to do it. And even if I'm gonna keep the fish, like say I'm Alpine Lakes fishing and I'm gonna catch it and cook it and eat it, I'll still catch it on a pinched barb. And this way I don't have to worry about on the riverside, checking the regs, making sure my barbs are pinched, forgetting, hoping I have pliers, hoping I didn't drop the pliers in the river, etc. All right, so we're gonna start it off, give it just a few wraps down the shank. There you go. Oh, I forgot to mention, we're also gonna use some hairline pheasant tail. So we're gonna pull that guy out and one side is better than the other side to use. You can see how I've pretty much just been using this side of the feather, because these are more like individual. They come off as individual little strands, whereas this side, it really just sticks together. Um, you could probably use it for some other different patterns, but for this pattern, for the tail, you're gonna grab about three of these. Uh, it's fine if you do four, it's fine if you do two, it doesn't really matter. So we'll just pull off about three of those and try to pull it off, but it's pretty much better just to cut it off. All right, so there we go. Got our tail feathers. Now proportion is key. So you don't want your tail feathers to stick out too far or to be too short. So you can kind of measure it with like the shank of your hook and about as long as it is, maybe even a touch shorter, is what you wanna do. So kinda hold it to it, measure it to the length you want, and give it a couple wraps, and then you can take a look. And if it's 
perfect, then keep tying it. And if not, you can give this just a small tug and kind of shorten it up. So we just shortened it up like a tiny bit and we're gonna wrap it all the way down. And if you mess up, just unwrap wrap, no big deal. There we go. Wrap it down, wrap it back and cut off the strand that's left right there. There we go. Oh, forgot to put, forgot to put the bead on it. Well, we'll have to do it on the next one, but we'll keep going. This will be an unweighted Rainbow Warrior. So next step, we're gonna tie in a little strand of this Rainbow Tinsel. Let's cut off our piece. It's super clear. I don't even know if you can see that. And tie that on. Work it all the way back. And then bring your thread up to the front. And then what I like to do, because I have a uh, rotary vise, so if you have one of those, what you can do is make a little loop, a little slip knot up there shorten this up and that way this doesn't flop around or go off of it and then you can kind of pull this tinsel tight not so tight that it breaks and then start to keep a little bit of tension on it as you spin your rotary vise and this will give you some nice even wraps bring it up to the front and now we're going to tie it off so do a few little loose, loose wraps till I can get my hand on it right. And we'll tie it back. There you go. Cut the extra off. Save this piece for the next one. Next one with the bead on it. Take a sip. There you have it. Okay, so the next step is gonna be our little rainbow dubbing. So you don't need a lot of this stuff. A little goes a long way. Um, and if you have a hard time getting it to stick, you can get this little, like, it looks like chapstick, but it's actually dubbing wax. And this stuff works great. Just put a little bit there on your thread, put it back, and then we're just going to pull out a little bit. This is probably too much, but that's fine. We'll stick it on the thread. And then I kind of like to hold the, the thread steady and spin the dubbing around the thread. You can start at the top or the bottom. I like to start at the top, kind of work it down, and then slide it up. And we'll start giving some wraps up to the head of this. This is like the thorax. Um, so if it starts to kind of get loose on you, I kind of just pinch it with my own hands, make it a little tighter. And now I've got all this extra, don't really want to use all this extra. So we're actually just going to cut that little bit off. Boom. Save that for later. Give it a few wraps. And this one doesn't have the bead head, so that's fine. Just give it a few extra red wraps up there. And then you can either do this by hand or use this little whip finish tool. Took me a while to get to figure out how to use these, but pretty much you just like you're throwing a Frisbee, you're gonna hook it into that, wrap the thread around that, let it spin, hold the thread against the thorax of the fly and bring this up and you do it about three or four times. Pull it down, pull that thread and we'll do it again. One, two, three, four, boom. There you go. We'll cut that. And if you want, you don't really need to, but I always like to just give it a little bit of this hard as, hard as whole head cement, just a teeny bit right there on the thread and it'll just absorb right in and then it's not gonna come undone. And that way I can fish with this thing quite a bit. It's gonna last for a lot of fish. Um, 
And there you have it. If you want, you can even use a little piece of Velcro. A little trick here is to use a little Velcro and kind of pull out the uh, dubbing there. There you go. And that's just gonna make it look a little more buggy, so they say. And if it's getting a little too wild, like I got this one piece that's a little too crazy, you can just give it a little trim. Trim a little at the head. There you go. So there you have it. Rainbow Warrior Nymph. So we're gonna tie a few of these up. I like to uh, sink them under a dry fly, like a dry dropper, really effective tool. Or you can do it under a indicator or a bobber, whatever you like to call it. Put a couple of flies under there, maybe a little split shot if you need to, if it's faster current, deeper water or something. And it's a small fly and it's really simple, but the fish just love this thing. I don't know what it is about it. You know, it's imitating a lot of different insects um, and it just works. So I hope you catch as many fish as I do on it. Uh, let me know if you do, show me pictures. All right, guys, thank you for tying with me, and I'll see you on the next one. If you like this video and want to see more like it, click like and subscribe. I'm going to be putting out a lot more videos where we're going fly fishing, backpacking, hiking, snowshoeing, crabbing, shed hunting, you name it. Thank you.